um, the first thing I want to mention is because I took so long grading your first assignment, um, and my apologies about that, this semester has just been crazy. Um, I am adjusting uh, the pose, uh, proposed deadline for this assignment. Um, you will have starting today all the way until Friday, March 17th by 12 p.m. I hope this um, extra time you find it useful. Um, it's, I'm trying to allow you time to, one, have access to me for, um, for questions and um, to help you strategize on how to respond to these questions. Um, and uh, two, to um, give you plenty of time to acquit yourself to uh, this material, um, some of which is actually sort of difficult. So, um, it, by now you know the, it's, you've already been through one of these tests, you know the boilerplate, um, it, you define it, the definition of these tests, you're responsible for everything, the video material, the class lectures, etc. cetera. Um, uh, and basically it's going to be five short answer questions um, requiring a minimum of uh, three sentences in response to each, um, though I note that uh, your responses should uh, be substantial and probably exceed this minimum. Um, in some cases, I'm asking you for examples uh, in these questions as well, so you'll probably be writing a bit more. Um, that's why it's good to have the extra time. Um, so each of these questions is going to be uh, sort of four points each for a total of 20 points uh, for the assignment. Um, uh, you should submit these uh, uh, your responses to these questions through Moodle, um, and uh, basically no late assignments um, will be accepted, with the important caveat that if um, the sky falls, and I understand it as well as anyone that the sky sometimes falls, um, it, you are to uh, contact me uh, either before the deadline or within, what do I say here, 12 hours? of the deadline so effectively you'll have till midnight on march 17th in order to to, to to negotiate some sort of extension and the few of you that have contacted me for extensions know that i'm very forthcoming um with these sorts of things so it's given the amount of time that i'm giving you uh, you should have no problem planning your responses to these questions uh in in the allotted time which is over a week um assignment submission uh please note that it's your responsibility to get me your assignment, one that it's uploaded properly and successfully, and two that you've uploaded the correct document um, to the assignment. Effectively, uh, if I don't have it, um, it doesn't exist. Uh, so it's uh, basically it's your responsibility to get it to me and get it to me properly. Um, if you're freaked out, uh, email me in addition to uh, submitting through Moodle. In a couple of cases for the last assignment that came in very handy for me because I did have trouble opening documents on Moodle but had the backup um, via email. So uh, that's a good way to do it. Um, and I haven't had too many problems with this this semester, but please note that there is a zero tolerance policy on plagiarism. If um, anybody is caught utilizing uh, undocumented sources or presenting um, internet sources or someone else's work as though it is their own, the penalties are severe and contractually I'm obligated to send it straight over to the Dean of Students office for an investigation. Um, so I list your uh, readings here. It's Kant granting to the Metaphysica Morals, Preface, Section 1, Section 2, Mills Utilitarianism, um, Sections 1, 2, and 3, and Mills on Liberty, Section 1. Um, video material, um, you know what's up there. Uh, it's the Sandel videos for both uh, Kant and for Mill. It's the Roderick videos for both Kant and for Mill, which are quite interesting actually. Um, and um, anything else that I've put up there to uh, help you out with this material. Um, so like I say, minimally three sentences. It's a paragraph is the idea and it should be a substantial paragraph. Um, I mean full sentences, no point form, it's too vague, I have to interpret. The goal is that I shouldn't have to interpret, you should be able to communicate uh, about these abstract normative claims, um, the prescriptive claims, 
ought claims, you ought to do this, uh, in a clear and effective way, and that's one of the skills that we're building in this course. Um, so, um, it basically, point form, if I have to interpret too much, or if I have to make an inference that's not on the page, uh, that's going to be a detractor to the, um, the response. So make sure it's clear, concise, and um, explicit in uh, your responses. So, um, I ask you three questions on Kant and two on Mill. Um, first one has to do with, it, effectively what I'm doing is um, uh, the preface. I ask you a question with regard to the preface, which is sort of an overview. I ask you a question that relates to something that was introduced in, in section one, but explicitly argued in section two and then I ask you something that exists only in section two of the grounding. So um, the questions, Kant argues in the preface of the grounding that a metaphysic of morals is necessary since quote what, is, uh, what it is to be morally good that it conforms to the moral law is not enough. That's on page three. Introducing this position, discuss why Kant uh, why does Kant argue this? Why Kant would argue this? And this is a little awkward. Maybe I'll fix that. Um, <clears throat> what does this tell us about the basis of Kantian morality? So, right, uh, right after this sentence, Kant kind of explains what he means. And um, the example I used is the jumbo um, check that was uh, one of the examples anyway um, that I used was the jumbo check that um, was presented to the student um, that I encountered in an old job of mine. Um, that, that was the example I used. But nonetheless, um, the argument itself is on page three. Um, I ask you to do two things. Why does Kant argue this position? So present the problematic that Kant is responding to here. Use an example. It might be a good thing to illustrate it. Uh, part two, what does this tell us about the basis of Kantian morality? That is, what makes an action morally good, according to Kant? Right. So um, right here uh, in the first question is the major distinction between Kantian morality and uh, the consequentialist approach of utilitarian morality. So um, you should have enough to engage with that question uh, just from what I've said so far. So that's the first question, four points. Right. Um, question two uh, related to the first formulation of the categorical imperative. In his discussion of the first formulation of the categorical imperative, and then I give it to you, act only according to that maxim whereby you can at the same time will, not wills, will, and I'm going to have to correct that as well. I should be making notes of that, um, that it should be universal law. So I've got a wills rather than a will, and uh, da -da -da. It, why does that's a w k awkward so um anyhow i'll start over in his discussion of the first formulation act only according to that maxim whereby you can at the same time will that it should become a universal law can't draws a distinction between perfect and imperfect duties introduce this distinction between perfect and imperfect duties briefly illustrating with examples. By doing so, I know that you understand how to apply uh, the first formulation of the categorical imperative, so it's a fairly comprehensive question, right? Um, and what I'm looking for in terms of your introduction to the distinction between perfect and imperfect duties, I'm looking for the mechanism by which we make the distinction Right. What's a perfect duty uh, obligated in terms of in terms of how he presents the first formulation? Uh, what's the root of an imperfect duty, according to Kant? It's not just a matter of strong and weak moral obligation. Right. It's a matter of determining how we well how we determine the, the whether it's a perfect or an imperfect duty that I'm looking for for that first question uh, or that that first formulation rather right so um, that should be interesting to read your examples I, I love reading your examples right it's wonderful to think through along with you how to apply these formulations um, so question three 
Kant introduces the humanity principle. Act in such a way that you treat humanity, whether in your own person or the person of another, always as an end in itself and never merely or simply as a means, as another formulation of the categorical imperative. This principle, he argues, rests on the dignity of human beings. In brackets, he argues that human beings are objects of respect. That's on page 36. Why are human beings, according to Kant, objects of respect? So explain autonomy is the answer, but explain what that means. Uh, Sandel's got a great treatment of this in his video. Uh, mind your motive. Um, second part of the question, how does this position follow naturally, as Kant argues that it does from the first formulation of the categorical imperative? So I'm asking you not only to explain why human beings are objects of respect and can be the foundation of yet another formulation of the categorical imperative, but explain, looking back at what we do in terms of the first formulation of the categorical imperative in order to illustrate this. All right. So um, again, that's a two-parter kind of question. All right. Should be fairly straightforward. Um, it, we've gone over this in detail. So now question number four. Mill modifies Bentham's initial position in two main respects. In the first, Mill finds it necessary to make a distinction between quantitative and qualitative analysis of pleasures. Right? These are the higher and lower order pleasures that um, on page 8 to 9 of, um, well, really page 8 to 10, he is uh, making the argument in utilitarianism. Uh, discuss the principle of utility generally, so introduce the kind of evaluation that Mill is making um, in terms of, of utilitarian morality, right? um, and explain this distinction discussing why Mill argues that it is a necessary addition to utilitarian morality. That is, what specific criticism of utilitarian morality is it intended to address? And Sandel introduces this criticism in his video. Right? We've discussed that. So um, that's uh, the fourth question pertaining to um, utilitarian morality. Explain utilitarian morality, explain the distinction between higher order and lower order pleasures or qualitative and quantitative analysis. How do we base that? And like why we would add that distinction, or why Mill would add that distinction in? Like, what criticism is it meant to address? Right. So it's a well-rounded understanding of the distinction. Right. It's you can't explain the distinction without explaining utilitarian morality, and you can't really understand why the distinction's there unless you understand the specific criticism it's meant to reply to. Finally, question number five. Mill introduces uh, the notion of political liberty in his On Liberty to address a specific criticism of the principle of utility related to individual human rights, which was introduced by Mac Michael Sandel, Justice, Episode 2, Posted to Moodle. Introduce, introduce the notion of political liberty advanced by Mill and discuss how this notion might respond to the criticism presented by Sandel. It's actually presented by a student, I think Anna was her name, of Sandel's, but he addresses it um, oddly in terms, um, ultimately laid on in the video, in terms of something from uh, Section 5 or Chapter 5, rather, of utilitarianism. Um, I present On Liberty as a another place where he is more explicitly and specifically addressing this criticism right, by actually introducing this notion of liberty. So um, that's your question. If you have er, your questions, if you have any questions about the questions, meta questions, if you will, um, please don't hesitate to email me or come to my office hours. You'll have plenty of time to do so. I have office hours on Friday this week, Monday, Wednesday, and um, rate moments before the test is due on Friday.
as well. Um, so uh, I'm typically at my office hours early. So please feel fr free to um, stop by and knock on my door if it's not open. And um, I'm more than happy to discuss anything pertaining to the course or to these assignments um, with you at that time in that place. All right. Take care. Have wonderful days, one for each of you.